Okay, everyone. So today we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be talking about, the title of this, <laughs> this video will be uh, Chapter 3, Space Odyssey. I don't know if that's actually what I'm going to call it in the book, but that's what I'm going to call it for the, the, this YouTube video uh, when, it, when I put it up later today. Um, so in, I think, three years back, yeah, three years back, I went to, I did a nine-month stay in Thailand. So uh, six months was I was living, I rented a condo behind the monastery and uh, Dhammakaya in, uh, in Thailand. It's a very large temple. So they have, there's housing complexes all around it just for the um, Thai residents that, that live in that city. And so I was renting a, a condo right behind the temple and I had this little motorbike. I would, I would drive to the temple every morning to, um, to be this uh, attendant for a monk. And um, I would drive him to his, his couple appointments and I would teach him English. And he was a really uh, just incredible meditator. I mean, I don't want to give more details about him, but uh, so I got to spend a uh, close time with uh, a really incredible teacher. And uh, at the end of our of our six months, he he recommended that I ordain as a monk, like just for the summer. And so I did that. Um, so that was in July, uh, three years back. And you know, I didn't I didn't really learn to med. Actually, I always feel like I didn't really learn to meditate until like a month ago. You know, because the meditation is always improving. It's always unfolding in a in a new and unique way. So it always feels like, oh, a year ago, like that wasn't really meditation. Like this is meditation, but it feels that way every year. You know, even now. So, uh, but there's a real there was a major uh, transition period, and that was when I met him. He explained that you know, when you practice Dhammakaya meditation, you really want to be relaxed and by which is a Thai word for just relax carefree and you want that to really be the the foundation of the meditation and, and your practice just letting go and really allowing that happiness to to arise from the center and uh, he taught me about continuity of of mindfulness and um lots of things and he thought it was best that i leave him and really go into uh, the ordination. And so I did that. And the first, the first month that I was ordained, I started to, I started to really, uh, like for some reason, I just started to miss this uh, character that I, I talked about in the previous week or pre like two weeks ago, I did a story about my first encounter with this uh, interdimensional uh, guide or, or helper that appeared as a result of, of my practice. I hadn't seen him or encountered him in a couple of years or something. So I just randomly started to, to miss him or it, can't even call him a him. It would be more appropriate. And so, uh, there's different exit techniques for out-of-body experiences and um, some of them require energy work um, others require that you get you relax into the body asleep mind awake state uh, at that point your mind's awake your your body releases the chemicals for or the processes for sleep paralysis and then the vibrational state begins so the vibrational state is when the astral body is separating from the physical and etheric body. So you have the physical body, the etheric body is the energetic uh, substructure of the physical body. So the acupuncture meridians, the chakras, the major and minor energy centers, um, 
it's a subtle body that is the substructure of this one. It's called the etheric body. The astral body is generated out of the etheric body when a person goes to sleep, but our consciousness, uh, there's no recollection of that when it happens, unless you're actually aware when it happens. And that's the basis for an out-of-body experience, having awareness as the body falls asleep. So when this vibrational state, when this separation begins, it's very intense uh, initially. Um, after, you've had a, after you've had many, it's not really noticeable anymore. But initially, it's like one of the craziest things you'll ever experience. Being in, it's like being in a tunnel of thunder. Um, so there's different methods. Uh, one, for example, is once your mind is awake and your body's asleep, you imagine that you're looking at yourself from the corner of the room, like up there, top corner, and you start to have this, it, that triggers this experience of, of it, it feels like, like two pieces of tape being pulled apart. Like the astral body is just sucked, ripped out of the physical one. And it's quite, it's an interesting uh, method. Another one's the rope technique, or once you're in the vibrational state to actually complete the exit, you, you feel with tactile sensation that you're pulling on a rope and that can cause the experience of the, the separation. The one that's the most effective and the one that I used in this instance was to imagine, feel, or remember a person or a place that you're emotionally connected to. Um, emotionally connected to like and to see that that person or the place outside of your body so and to do that every night um, before you go to sleep or uh, before you take a nap so as you're falling asleep you're actually remembering this person and remembering them you know 20 feet or however far outside of outside of the body and starting to feel the starting to feel yourself in that image and in that place or with that person. And the stronger the emotions, the more of the, the stronger the effect. So I was doing this uh, every night, remembering him uh, or it, <laughs> the helper, the, the being. And yeah, so I did that for 21 days. It, 24 days straight, something like that. Every time I went to sleep, I did it. Every time I took a nap, I did it. And then one night or one uh, day, actually, probably, yeah, tw day 21, day 24, something like that. I was in a dream. And, and uh, it was interesting. In the dream, I was in a body that is not mine. So I was, I was in a house of like black or they were all um, African-American or black adepts. Like they're all highly spiritually trained, but there was, there were just, they were all black dudes and I was one of them. And so I went up to the main guy. And I was like, Hey man, I'm in the wrong body. You know, I'm half, I'm half what genetically I'm half white and half Asian. I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm in the wrong body. And he was like, oh, I got you, man. So he drags me to another part of the house and he takes me into this, this room. And oh, so crazy. It was like inception. There were all these beds and, and, and more of these adepts laying in the beds. And he's like, okay, come here. So he lays me down. And as soon as he lays me on the, as soon as he lays me down, boom, like that, I become lucid, just awake. And I realize that I'm in a dream. And as soon as I realize I'm in a dream, this character appears by the side of the bed. It's like the whole dream stopped. This being appears at the side of the bed. He has this kind of, uh, um, wrap around his head. So I couldn't, I couldn't actually see his face and just like very muscular build, actually like gray skin, if I remember. And he stuck his hand out. And as soon as I touched his hand, uh, the vibrational state began. So usually you have the vibrational state and you feel your, your, yourself in your body, in your bed or in your chair, wherever you're about to have the out-of-body experience from. 
But this time, the vibrational state and the separation of the astral body began in the dream state as if something or someone actually entered it or a part of my consciousness triggered it from that, um, from within a dream. So the vibrations began while in the dreamscape. So I have this, uh, I do this posture. It's like the kind of like ascension posture. Kind of looks like Jesus on the cross. So I do that posture, I start, I ascend out of the dreamscape into this light, into the physical body that's in the, that's in the monk's corridor, and then out of the physical body into, uh, into the astral body. So the astral body separates after that. So it's like phasing through three realities. And this, uh, I'm still thinking of, I start thinking of, I, I remember, um, the name of the being and the, the specific energetic signature he has or how he feels to me. And um, I actually did that the moment the being touched my hand. So coming out and uh, the ceiling disappeared and just going through this portal of light. And it's, it's pretty similar to uh, hyperspeed. Like if anyone's seen Star Wars, it's like it has that feeling of everything moving past you really, really quick and all the all the particles and um, just the sense that the body is moving immensely quickly or the subtle body is moving Im immensely quickly. And uh, yeah, there was specific, um, all I could describe them as is transit, transit systems or like ways that the astral body was being transported through space and time. So the first one was this kind of, it was like everything was white and there were these just massive, just streaks of colors, like rainbow bands of colors everywhere, just flowing past me, just streaks of, of beautiful lights and, and colors. And, uh, and the, that particular environment I had a sense of flashing. It was like, it was like a strobe light, but at the same time, all these colors were flying past me. And uh, it was just, the speed was just incredible. So pass through that, that kind of, that reality disappears. And I found myself in a magenta bubble. It was like a magenta sphere, like that covered the whole body. And it was like floating in this uh, whirlpool of energy out there in space. I don't know where it was, but it was just, there's just black everywhere and this kind of um, energy whirlpool. And the interesting thing is like, I could see through the sphere and I could see other beings in their spheres, or I could see other, sen other forms of sentience in their, in their spheres. I couldn't see their bodies, but I could see the spheres and I could sense that, that they were there. So we're like going through this whirlpool, all of us together, moving, moving, moving. I don't know where any of this is going, moving, moving. And then the sphere that I was in sunk into this center of the whirlpool. It was very strange after that. It was like, it's, I can't even really describe it. It felt like, it's like you're quickly moving through folds in space and time that are perceived as like, as if they were like crevices in between like crevices of the brain, but some kind of crevices or folds in, in space time or like between realities or something. I know it, that's very vague. It doesn't make much sense, but that's the only way I could describe it. And then there was this uh, experience of like falling into one of these crevices. And as I fell into the crevice, my consciousness began to reappear somewhere else. And I had a thought that was impossible. I mean, I've, I've never, it was, it's impossible for me to have thought this. But I had the thought, I'm tired of having to come back to this place, which is really strange because I've never been to that place. I don't, I don't remember ever being there. I don't have any recollection of having been there before, but I had the thought, I'm tired of coming back here, of having to come back here. And, um, in that body or in that consciousness that I was in, that body had specific faculties. It had specific capacities that this one does not have. Like 
all of the as my consciousness was appearing in that world all of the it was as if everything about that world was downloaded into my consciousness in a second so like i had i saw i experienced a succession of frames a succession of images like <laughs> that showed me the denizens of the world the beings what they look like the environment of that reality of that world this world already had a merging of uh, sentience and uh, some kind of artificial intelligence. So nature and the artificial intelligence were already one. That like all the trees were this kind of technological sentience. And so images of this were uh, were arising. The the kinds of homes that the beings lived in that was appearing. Uh, what they looked like. The uh, they had clothes, but they wear the same clothes all the time. Like the clothes are somehow a part of their, possibly a part of their design or their structure or something. And so everything about that world, everything about the the people, about that environment, was just downloaded into my brain within within seconds. Just a massive series, of tons of images, just immediately downloaded into the consciousness. Um, of that particular body and um, like that kind of perception I do not have that kind of perception in this body um, I don't I don't process information like that in this body so the uh, all the images pass like within a second all of that information is 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 uh, retained and then I begin to appear actually like appear in that world and uh, yeah, I found myself, as I was appearing, I found myself hugging the being, the, the helper. And in that moment, I realized that it was actually my love for, for him and uh, my gratitude for that time, the times that he helped me. It was that love that allowed me to go from here to there. Like through three interdimensional transit whatever they are from this world all the way to that one it was it was love that allowed that transition between between veils and and space and time and so i found myself hugging him and there were five other beings around him they were all blue and they had these like purple purple type of regalia purple type of uh, robes and six of them were floating in the air blue like like Krishna blue, that's how blue they were. And uh, yeah, and as soon as I was holding him, my uh, consciousness began to uh, rematerialize in the physical body, in the, in the monk's robe, in the corridor uh, back in Thailand. So that was the end of that experience. And um, it goes through phases where the OBEs are much more likely to happen or there's more like energy and, and drive to experience them. So I went back to that uh, reality twice after that, probably in the same week. And the second experience was, yeah, the what happened was I, I remembered his signature, did the separation and uh, there was no movement through through transits or through portals or anything like that. I just appeared like that in that, that place. I'm not sure if it was the same world, but there is a sense of that same intelligence being there. But I couldn't see his body this time, but he had something to show me. And there was a kind of facility. <laughs> so I mean by space odyssey. Uh, there, I, I found myself in a room and I saw, and the being, the voice like that this intelligence told me uh, you're the only person here who's going to remember this uh, all of these astral bodies of the humans that are here that none of them are going to remember this uh, this is part of a higher levels of sentience help in the evolutionary process of lower levels of sentience in all worlds but it's done covertly <clears throat> and it's done without interference. So they're not supposed to remember that this is happening. And what was happening there was that all of the beings that I saw, they were 
humans in their astral body. So they were all sleeping on earth and they were practicing meditation. They were practicing healing. They were even, some of them were even practicing martial arts, psychokinesis, um, all of these abilities that a lot of people awaken to and begin to experience. Uh, the sentience told me that the gifts that people have, whatever it is that they are, they've practiced them in other places and other realities and they don't even know it so the awakening and the 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 power that a person steps into later in their life is something that they've done in realities and in aspects of uh their consciousness uh that like this the term there's a new age term that says you're always like you're only remembering uh what you already are i don't even know if it's just if that's new age but it's I just write it, I just put it in that category, but you're only remembering um, the things that you've done and the gifts that you already have. I, I, I viscerally saw how that is actually the case in this particular instance. And uh, this was just one group of humans and it was being facilitated by one specific group of interdimensional or extraterrestrial intelligences. Um, but how many groups, how many groups of higher beings are facilitating this kind of thing i have i have no idea this is just the one thing that the one place that i saw where where it was happening and uh yeah so it had this sense that there's actually there's actually aspects of the evolutionary process spiritual evolutionary process there's aspects of it and parts of it that we just do not understand at all and have never seen except for the people who've seen it so crazy part is I had this, I saw this in an out of body, I experienced all of this in the OBE. And then I read like a year later, I read journeys out of body, far journeys and ultimate journeys. I never read those books before. I heard of Bob Monroe, but I never read those books. In far journeys, he describes the exact same thing. <laughs> blew my mind, just blew it. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. He described the same thing that he was in this place and all the humans in their astral bodies were like undergoing th these lessons and training and the being told him and Bob asked the facilitator, the, the interdimensional facilitator, like, hey, you know, what is all this? And then the facilitator's like, you're awake right now? How is that possible? And then he's like, I don't know, I do this all the time. And he's like, oh, you're one of those. You're, you're a traveler, aren't you? Yeah, you definitely, you don't belong in this class anymore. So uh, that was just shocking to read that in, in his book because um, I had no conception of, of this sort of thing happening at all, being a thing at all. So that was the, the last experience I had like that, um, that was, that seemed like that far out. The more recent OBEs were more, um, they seem more like parallel realities and weren't particularly characterized by um, alien or, or interdimensional beings. But yeah, so that's the, that's the Space Odyssey story. I'll say the final, the final OBE that happened at that time in Thailand. And um, that will end this, uh, this segment, this video. So my grandma was sick and uh, it was actually pretty, it was pretty, it was worrying me um, when I was a monk. Uh, she ended up in the hospital for some kind of like kidney, kidney issues. And um, so, uh, so at the end of meditation, every time I did a meditation, I would dedicate the merits to her and, and wish that you know, she'd be happy and that she'd be healthy and that everything, um, you know, that she make a, a, a full recovery. And so was in a dream and a similar thing happened, this kind of external intelligence or thing uh, triggered lucidity. It's actually a kind of gas. I was just like walking down the street in a dream and this kind of strange gas appeared in the dream. And I was like, that's freaking weird. I'm, I must be dreaming. And then as soon as that happened, boom, just reality flipped from the dream 
had the sense of coming out and flying to my house from Thailand. And when I got to the house in the meditation room, never seen a being like this in my life. It was so strange. Um, I'm not really, I'm not into sci-fi. You know, my dad was really into sci-fi. I don't know why all this stuff's so sci-fi. And But there was a being in the room about, I don't know, five feet tall. She wasn't particularly tall. Pink. Pink. Her skin was pink, like actually pink. Her forehead was like a little larger than ours and her eyes were a bit smaller and they were gold. Like her irises were gold. And uh, maybe if someone else saw her, the appearance would be alarming. But her energy was very bodhisattva, like very Buddhist and very healing. Like, like I just felt calm and, and peaceful and safe as soon as I saw her, her golden eyes. And she was actually wearing it looked like a, it would look like a nurse's outfit from a space colony like 200 years in the future <laughs> it just it straight up looked like something out of star trek a nurse's outfit out of star trek or something and uh she just looked at me and she smiled and i just felt this this peace and that was it she didn't say anything no communication but just like a very piercing, loving stare. And that was the last uh, being of that type that I, I've encountered. So yeah, still have sensed the uh, initial helper in some OBEs, but no physical appearance, just uh, his presence there. But uh, that was the last like face-to-face with one of these uh, one of these unusual beings. So yeah, that concludes the uh, the chapter, uh, the space odyssey. I'm gonna I'm gonna end the recording and if anyone has any questions here, you're more than welcome to ask them. So